Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today I'm going to be making the case for why you should consider purchasing a guitar outside of Fender and Gibson. Now, I'm very fortunate. Doing what I do, buying, selling guitars, demoing gear, even if it's out of my own pocket, somehow, at the end of the day, I end up in the black. And one side effect of this, I get to try out a lot of different guitar models from a lot of different brands, and some have greatly surprised me because with some you really don't know what you're going to get. I'm going to give you a prime example. This guitar right here. I bought this guitar. This is a 77. It's a Japanese brand. Ex Robato. Sight unseen. Never played one in person. I just had really high faith in the company itself and the overwhelming reviews. And with my experience with Japanese made instruments, I was willing to give this guitar a try. If you watch this channel, you know I go through a lot of guitars. This guitar was built so well. They did such a great job on the frets themselves as far as the level, the dress. This thing was absolutely to die for. Outside of the pickups, swapped in Fralins, that was it. This guitar is a lifer for me, and I'm just I'm blown away at the fact that things like this exist, and sometimes you might not even know it, or you might turn your nose up saying, ah, oh, that's not Gibson, I'm not gonna give it a try. And the kicker when it comes to this specific guitar was, even after installing the Lindy Frail and Pure PAFs, I was still under $1,000. Granted, I did buy this used, however, it did come with a very, very nice hard shell case. Compare that, for example here, with a brand like Epiphone. What would you get for that? Because Gibson at $1,000, you're not getting a Gibson semi hollow body guitar for that price. Not anymore, you're not. You might get a Lucille, 949 if I last checked, if that's correct still. That comes with a gig bag, some questionable electronics, and who knows with the quality control of some of those Epiphones that could be really hit or miss. Or, you know, save a few hundred more dollars, the Inspired by Gibson. Some people love those, me personally. I've never played one that I remotely considered taking home, even when plecked. But it just goes to show, it doesn't necessarily matter what the actual brand on the headstock says. You might be able to find something where you least expect it in a brand you've never heard of before at a great price. Now, another reason why some of these other brands are able to give such a high quality and consistently better built product than some of the mass produced Fenders and the Epiphone Squires lines and things like that has to do with the fact that they're not as mass produced. There's simply less of them being made. So what does that mean? That means that the luthiers who go over these guitars at the quality places like 77 and some others that we're going to mention later in this video, they really spent the time to get this thing absolutely right. The nut perfectly cut, perfectly done so that there's no tuning stability issues, has great hardware on it already. The frets are so buttery smooth. I could not believe how well done this guitar is. And just perfectly level, the playing experience, really I could tell that somebody went over this guitar and really took their time to do it right. That's not always the case when I'm buying something from Epiphone, from Squire, or Fender Mexico. And honestly, it's kind of understandable why there's not the same amount of attention to detail put into each Epiphone and each FMIC Fender product, whether it's a Fender or a Squire. Fender Japan is not an FMIC product. They are a separate company, but that's a different discussion. Just quantity. You have to think of the amount of guitars that are being made every single day to meet all of these quotas, to make sure that they're getting out enough guitars to make all of the shareholders or whoever is going to get this money at the end of the day happy. It's all about sacrifices, cutting quarters, and one of the biggest places that these companies can save money, unfortunately, this is just the truth, is on the actual human experience of it, which is the tough stuff of making sure the frets are really well done, making sure the nut is cut perfectly, making sure there's no issues with high frets, that the guitar is going to play well right out of the box. And another reason to shop outside of Fender and Gibson, you get guitars like this to pick from. This is a Reverend, looks like a Telecaster, acts almost nothing like it. It's got a set neck on it, Gibson scale length, these amazing modern Fishman Fluence pickups, which I have grown to really, really like, a Bigsby, beautiful finish, 
what more can you ask for? It's really cool. You can also find yourself all over the place with all sorts of brands as far as people that will make guitars that aren't just Strats, Kellys, Les Pauls, 335s, SGs, God forbid. There are a plethora of people that still do take chances and if you're a little bit eccentric or you're somebody who wants to stand out a little bit more when you're going out on stage to perform live and you still want a really good product, you have a plethora of other options available to you and a lot of the time, they're going to cost you less. Now, value is another big part of the equation here, and there are two kind of aspects of value that I want to hit into. But the first being, I'm going to give you a really practical example here. Let's talk about ESP guitars, the LTD range, the EC-1000s. They make an EC-1000, EC-1000T, multiple kind of colors, and even an Evertune option available to it. Let's talk about the one that's $1199 that comes with either the Fishman Fluence pickups in it or the Seymour Duncan pickups in it. You're getting Tone Pro's hardware. You're getting the same mahogany neck, mahogany body, binding on it, really high quality control when it comes to the people at ESP. They knock it out of the ballpark with that. That comes in at the price of uh, a tribute now from Gibson that has a maple neck on it, much more kind of streamlined stuff down to it. Maybe you might want something like that from Gibson because it's more of your thing. But really when you break it down as far as cost-wise go, you're getting a guitar that you might not think to yourself, man, I'd really like to upgrade this. I'd really like to upgrade that. And also, I do understand one of those guitars is made in Indonesia, formerly in Korea, the ESP EC-1000, and that the Gibson is made in America. But these days, honestly, it's less and less important to me, and I'm noticing less and less of a difference, especially with the well-established brands. There's a reason why those guitars fly off the shelves. But having spent some time with this guitar, and God knows how many hours in my life playing Japanese guitars, my God, I can't say enough good things about Japanese guitars. If you've never seen this channel, I will stand by this statement. I would take sight unseen a high-end Japanese guitar over any high-end American guitar as far as knowing I'm not going to have any problems. It's going to play like butter. The craftsmanship is just going to be absolutely top-notch. So I know some people might not be willing to spend the amount of money that's on asking price for some of these guitars. I know the modern E2 line of ESP guitars, again, referencing that brand, for example, they're pushing over $2,000. Some people say that is a lot of money for a made in Japan import guitar. When I can get an American version of something really similar, at a comparable price used, Ah, uh, yeah, you could, and you could also be rolling your dice really greatly on quality control. I love Gibson guitars. I am not making this video to crap on Gibson guitars and say that they're bad. I'm just saying that you do have other options out there and that Gibson, quite frankly, throughout the years have not always been the most consistent. And that's not to say Fender has been either, especially in the last two or three years. And the last thing I want to say about value is going to be strictly on the high end of guitars. We're talking about handmade instruments that rival the Fender Custom Shop in the Gibson Custom Shop. If you have a ton of money and you genuinely want the best possible product, if you're looking at a Gibson style instrument, specifically a 335, I would be looking at a Collings I-35 over it. Those guitars are just incredibly good. Like in a way that I, I don't think I could ever justify having one because a 335 just doesn't tick the boxes for me personally in the way that a Telecaster style instrument does. But man, the quality, you can just feel it. And it's just so amazing when you have something that precious in your hand and you recognize it's not just precious because it has the name on the headstock on it. It's precious because the people that built it truly give a damn about it and they really only will accept the best for their customers. Again, don't mean this to say anything bad about Gibson, but there really is a significant difference as far as the quality overall goes from a guitar to guitar basis. And when it comes to Fender style guitars, there are no shortage of brands that do that at a lower price point than the Fender Custom Shop does by quite a few thousand dollars, depending on who you're looking at. You have Nash, 
you have LSL, you have Exotic now, you have Sur, that's a little bit more expensive and you know, not exactly one person making those to my knowledge, but all of those guitars offer you the classic Fender experience without giving you the Fender price tag. Plus some of them, especially in the case of the Sur, do have some modern appointments that a player might say, you know what, I'd rather have stainless steel frets on this guitar. I don't have to worry about ever changing the frets in my lifetime because it takes a lot to wear those down. Whereas you're somebody more traditional, maybe an LSL or a K-Line might be right up your alley. And the last reason is because you're supporting a smaller business, not a private equity firm. I don't have anything against capitalism. I don't have anything against people making money. I like money. You want to give me money? Click the button down below. Give me money. Nobody's ever done that before. Be the first one. But really, my point being here, I think about Paul Reed Smith now. They're considered the third of the big three. What's the difference between Paul Reed Smith to me and Fender these days to me? I know the owner of that company. I feel like I could talk to that guy. I feel like he's somebody I can relate to. I feel his passion. Whether or not you like his guitars, you hate his guitars, there is a respect level of the fact that he is running the show and everything is done, even if you don't agree with the reasons why decision-wise, for a reason that is in the interest of the customer at the end of the day, as well as trying to help out his employees and doing everything he can to make as many people happy. I look at the culture of a place like that. Amazing. You actually hear him mingle with the people that work there. He knows people by name. It's not one of these BS things. I know people that have worked there. Not a joke. Fender these days, this, they're Walmart. They're Walmart. That's what they feel like to me. They don't feel like the company that I grew up loving that so many people have grown up wanting to have their guitars and I still love Fender guitars. We're going to get into a little bit more into depth into that. I know if you saw the stream the other day, you probably have an idea of how I feel about the FMIC brand as a whole right now. But knowing that you're supporting a smaller business, Reverend 77 Guitars, Paul Reed Smith guitars, I know that sounds ridiculous to say them after those two. Um, Dan Electro, all these other little brands. It, it, just, just, it feels more real to me and I would much rather support creative people who are trying different things, who are trying to give the best possible product they can give with the best intentions in mind while still making a buck doing what they love. And that's just something that really matters to me. As far as cons go, there's really one or two kind of big ones. The first is gonna be, say you spend all this money on a handmade custom guitar from Ricardo Sanchez. He makes great guitars. You should check out his website down below, no affiliation, and I don't even own one of those guitars, but he makes those by hand himself. Maybe $1,700 to $2,000 if you spec the thing all the way out. The resale is gonna be the problem, and it's not just him, it's a lot of these brands you're gonna take a bath on it. Whereas if you spend money on a high-end Fender Custom Shop guitar, especially if you're smart enough to buy one used, don't buy one of those things new. You're probably gonna be able to get at least your money back and if you're really lucky or you pick a really rare custom color or a model that is very uncommon, you're gonna make a few bucks. Same thing goes for Gibson in that case. So if that's something that's really important to you, maybe steer clear. On the lower end, same thing applies, might even be tenfold. With Reverends, I see those selling for you know half, straight up half for mint condition guitars. And my, many people would say that a guitar that is used should sell for around that price. Some would say maybe 30% of new if it's in mint condition, but that's just simply not how the current market is working. Maybe it will change, maybe it will evolve, but if you're really worried about that aspect of it, I would stay with the Fender or the Gibson. However, the only other thing is, I mean, the name. Do you really care? Does it really bother you that you're not playing a Fender Telecaster? Does it really bother you that you're not playing a Gibson Les Paul? These are questions that you can only answer for yourself. And you know, you can only live within your means, so to speak. But at the end of the day here, I hope that whatever guitar you play, whether it is a private equity Fender or a Gibson guitar or a 77 or a Paul Reed Smith or a Reverend Tokai, whatever it is, I hope it inspires you to play because at the end of the day, that's what these are. These are tools. They are meant to bring out your creativity in them.
That's all I have for you guys today. I tried to do this in as few cuts as possible. See how I did once I hit the edit room in Final Cut Pro. If you enjoy the content on this video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.